Hey everyone, this is Mike from TechHog.com with another review. This time we're going to be checking out the Samsung Galaxy Note, so stay tuned. Alright, so check it out. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note, and in case you missed it, we did do uh, an unboxing of this uh, a few weeks ago, or maybe about two weeks ago. Um, and so we had the time to actually spend some time with it. We took about two weeks to kind of really sink our teeth into it and see what we were thought about this display, um, the camera and the pen and all the other good stuff that comes with it, uh, rather than kind of rush a review. So um, let's just jump right into the hardware aspect of it. Um, obviously right here you have your front facing camera. This is a two megapixel camera. On the back you have an eight megapixel um, with an LED flash. Down here you do have a speaker and obviously here is where your pen snaps in. Uh, on the left side of the device is your volume rocker. I don't know if you can see that there. On the right side is your power sleep button. Uh, on the bottom is your noise canceling microphone or I'm sorry, your regular microphone um, and your micro USB port. Uh, on the top of it you have your 3.5 millimeter head jack and if you can see it right there, there's your noise canceling. Uh, headphone. So overall, um, you know, it's a pretty nice little little device. Um, the display on it is a 5.3 inch diagonal display, um, and then of course you have your four capacitive buttons on the bottom. Um, overall, the device um, is actually pretty light. Overall, I think it's about six and a quarter ounces, uh, and that includes the battery inside. Which um, may I add? Me kind of pull this. Get your fingernail under there. Um, so here's where your battery card goes. You have your, um, if you want to add your micro SD, you know, memory, uh, you can do that. You actually have your AT&T um, SIM card there. And uh, so the battery here is a, I think I believe it's a 2,500 milliamp battery. Um, and we'll just pry this out so you can see the thickness of it. Um, there's the thickness. It's um, not actually that bad. It's not really that weighty, um, or I should say, it doesn't really weigh that much. Um, but overall, it's you know added to the device. Well, I should actually say the device itself, um, with the battery in it, is still relatively thin. I and mean, you can see that right there um, for an amazing you know how wide this device is. Now it comes to the battery door. You'll notice that it's a little flimsy. Um, it's just like the one on the Galaxy S2. Um, you know that cheap kind of feel to it. Um, you'll notice right here is your NFC chip, um, which connects to the back, which are these little pins over here. Um, but, you know, honestly, you know, it, it sounds kind of cheap. You can take it, you can flex it back and forth, but you can see it pops back in the shape. So as, even though it sounds cheap, um, and we cover this on the Galaxy S2 review as well, that it is really strong, surprisingly. So you can bend this much further, but I guess I'm this back to Samsung, so... I'm not going to do that. Um, but, you know, like, like most devices from Samsung, the battery cover just goes across the edges, and you can hear it just snap right back in. So, that does sound a little cheap, but overall, um, it's not that bad. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and uh, power this baby on, so we'll hit the power button here. And as that's juicing up, we're going to... Uh, Kind of talk about these. The the Note actually does uh, have 4G um, LTE as opposed as well as well as um, HSPA Plus, which is uh, AT and T's enhanced 3G network. Um, it does theoretically have the ability to download uh, speeds of up to 14.4 megabytes per second. So that does qualify as 4G in, in their legal terms, um, but it does have the real 4G net uh, network. Um, which people have been getting upwards of uh, 50 megabytes per second. Um, so, you know, you do have that functionality built in as well. Um, so here is your launch screen. Uh, as you see, if you touch the screen, it dims and gives you sort of a, a honeycomb unlock look, um, in which you can kind of drag the your finger out. I believe you can actually assign uh, buttons to the outside rim of this to unlock the device in uh, a different manner. But if you simply just drag it and pull it off, you come back to the... Uh, the actual main screen here. And you'll notice that um, it's running Android 2.3 Gingerbread. Um, it will be upgraded to uh, Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. Uh, Samsung has said probably sometime in April. 
Uh, I think it was delayed a little bit. So um, overall, it's being run by Samsung's, uh, I think you would say it's Zynos or Xenos processor, however you want to say it. Um, and it is a 1.4 gigahertz dual core processor. Um, so it is quite snappy. Um, but I have noticed a little bit of slowdown depending on, on uh, what I'm doing or what's been running. Now, granted, I do have a live wallpaper running, so you'll see a slight little, you know, slowness there. But if I try to go quick, I'm trying to go you know, a little bit faster, it does have a slow kind of motion kind of as it goes through. Um, but as you notice, I went all the way through the wallpaper, or the, the panels, by going in one direction. So it is kind of nice to have that, uh, that flow. Now, if you hold down uh, on these little buttons here, the screen should pull back a little bit, and you can actually slowly just kind of slide your, your way of going around that way if you choose to do that. And that's kind of part of TouchWiz, um, which is Samsung's UI, which is laying on top of Android 2.3. Um, but overall, the device is pretty snappy. Um, we haven't really noticed anything, you know, too, there, like I said, there is a little bit of slowdown here and there. Um, that could be mostly because of the display size and how much that processor has to push around. Um, I had the, or I still own a uh, Samsung Galaxy S2 for Sprint, and uh, then you know that's only a 4.53 inch display, and you know that is a running, uh, I believe it's only just a 1.2 gigahertz Zynos processor, um, and I haven't really noticed anywhere near as much issues as I've, as I've noticed on this. But that being said, they're not, I wouldn't call them deal breakers, so I wouldn't really concern yourself with that. Um, overall, if we can fire up a game like Angry Birds, which came out, and we'll. Uh, pull the pen out for this so you can kind of see a little action of this playing. Um, the pen is a, um, it works almost capacitive, so it works the same way as you touch the buttons here, and the pen works by induction, so there is no battery um, in this little pen, so you'll notice it is very little, little to it. It's thin, this little white tip. Um, it uses the um, Magnetic Renaissance, I think this is Renaissance, or I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly, um, but it's basically the technology created by Wacom, and if you're not familiar with them, they're very popular in the art field for drawing um, on pads that can relate and put drawings onto computers. Um, but you can go ahead and hit your, your screen there, and you know, if you want to, you can see how it's moving back and forth, and it's pretty quick. I mean, I can move the pen back and forth. Um, so we'll go ahead and pick a board here. And we'll go ahead and uh, sort of. Now, obviously, this is the Android version, so you get a little bit of ads, but you know that's never killed anybody. And you know, with the new Angry Birds, you can kind of pull in and pull out a little bit. I'm not going to review this here, but you can see that if you take the pen and tap on the bird and pull back, you can move it up and down. As soon as you let go, you know it works just as if it was your finger. Um, but the reason I want to fire this up, you know, you can see how the game. Um, it works really, really well. Um, so we'll go ahead and put the pen. Actually, let's leave the off to the side. Um, in terms of web browsing, what we'll do is we'll bring up uh, our website here, techhog.com. And we're on Wi-Fi right now, so we're not going to get any of those 3G or 4G speeds. Um, so we'll let this load up. Okay, so this is our mobile version, um, but if you scroll down the bottom, you can kind of see the scrolling here. A little delay, you can kind of see it kind of skips here and there, and I'm trying to get it to go. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the uh, the mobile theme and load um, our web version. A little bit faster loading there. Now the one thing that's nice about having a display this size is obviously um, so much more screen real estate to, to view um, text and stories are, are much larger. Um, you can kind of see how it had a little acceleration there as I flipped it up. Um, but overall, everything's loaded up. It's smooth um, for the most part, so not too many issues there. Um, you know, here is our Galaxy Note review, the written review. And we'll go ahead and pull this up. Overall, speeds are pretty snappy on uh, Wi Fi here. And you just double click. Now you can see there's a little bit of slowdown there, how you had that checkerboard pattern in the background. Um, like I said, you're, you're asking a lot of a processor to kind of pull up this kind of real estate. Um, it's a lot of, lot of space. But overall, the text is really sharp. And um, so the display itself, let's kind of get back to that a little bit, is a uh, 1280 by 800 display. 
uh, resolution. Um, it, it, it's not a Super AMOLED Plus display like it is on the uh, Samsung Galaxy S2. This is a, just a Super AMOLED display, uh, which means it does have a Pentel Matrix um, technology in it, which um, gets into whole other things of you know if you want to get into the whole technical terms of it. But there's sub pixels that are dark, and it kind of creates a little bit of a checkerboard pattern if you want to get really close to the text. But um, when it's held about you know 10 inches away from your eyes, honestly, you're not really going to notice it. I don't know if you can see in this uh, image here. The text is real. I mean, it might be in the best in this picture, but the text is very clear. Um, I've had no complaints whatsoever. Um, in fact, I think the the, it's, it's actually really amazing. Aside from um, the HD display phones like a HTC Resound or a uh, Galaxy Nexus or even the iPhone's Retina display, um, this is right up there with some of the best ones. You know, you do have the incredible dark blacks, very nice, vibrant colors. Um, there is a, a, an occasional oversaturation for some of the things like the green here and stuff like that, but that's just, you know, Samsung's coloring. Um, so, Let's go into a few other things. You know, we have some applications in here. Um, you know, you are going to get some of the AT&T, you know, bloatware. Um, you know, you can kind of just drag them out. Now, you know, you do have some of the preloaded stuff from Samsung as well, um, which is, you know, obviously you get some of their hub softwares. But I think probably the one we want to talk about is this S-Memo, um, which is kind of cool. You know, you get this uh, little... Uh, board here it looks like a little cork board, and you can take some pictures and you can add them to this, and you can draw from here. You can do different things. Uh, here's an interesting one um, that I actually scooped up. Sent being a Sprint customer, we actually got a a Sprint mailer in the mail, and you can see this device here is actually a Samsung Galaxy S, not a Samsung Galaxy Nexus. But down here. They put, I don't know if you can read that, it might be really small because it is actually small. They wrote it as a Galaxy Nexus. So it was kind of fun when I was actually reviewing the phone to circle that, point it out, and then post it up on Twitter. So some of you may have seen that. Um, so it's kind of neat to kind of be able to do these kind of small little doodles here and there. Um, you know, I took one of my son here, which is kind of fun, and I drew a Smurf staring back at him. Um, he thought that was hilarious. So, you know, in terms of that, oh, again, I'm pushing this. You know, you can kind of come in and just get a fresh little thing. And because of the the pen is capacitive, you know, you can actually start really light, and then you can press really dark. Um, you know, so it is really nice to just kind of be able to come in and, uh, you know, do some really cool little, you know, you can just do stuff like this. Just have some fun here. If you couldn't tell by now, yes, I did go to art school. And this is just real kind of just. So, and then you can kind of come in and pick colors and things like that. Um, but it's a very cool little thing. It does um, add some kind of novelty effect to the phone. Um, after about two weeks with it, that's why I call it a novelty effect. Um, after about two weeks, it does kind of lose its its flair. Um, I don't. I didn't find myself using it as much as I did with the first day or two. Um, but it's still a really cool thing, and I'm sure there's many of you out there that'll get a good, you know, a big kick out of it and probably use it a lot more than I did. Um, but you know, to each his own. Um, anyway, you also get the updated Play Store that just launched. Um, you know, the software updated itself for that. Um, but overall, guys, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't know what else to really cover. I mean, I'm not going to cover the Android operating system. We've done that enough times. Um, you know, you have TouchWiz. Um, if you're not a fan of that, you know, you may not like it. Um, but you can always go and, you know, have other options and root if you're so kind to do that. Um... But overall, you know, the device is, um, it's big. Um, that's kind of a little closing conclusion here. Um, I will say that when I carried it out in public for the very first time, um, pulling it out, I did feel a little embarrassed. I was standing in line at a convenience store getting gas and, uh, you know, pulled it out because I felt an email go off. And people behind me, I just kind of felt people were staring at me with this, you know, gigantic phone in my hand. Um, 
I don't have small hands, but I don't have you know tiny hands either. And you can see how big this really is. And to put it into comparison, um, here's an iPhone 4S um, side by side, and you know this one here I can go across the entire screen with. Um, if I'm holding it in my hand here, I can touch the corner and touch the corner here. Um, I can't get across the entire phone, not even halfway with the, uh, the uh, Galaxy Note. You got to kind of jostle the phone around in your hand to kind of come down here to do this and then reach all the way up here or slide your hand in the back and slide it down again. Um, the granted, the iPhone's got a little case on it. This is, you know, metal, but it's not really that much larger. But um, screen size, whew, I mean, it it's big. Um, you can kind of see that there. Um, but, you know, that's one phone. This is a little bit maybe even a little bit larger. This is a um, another phone by Samsung. This is the Samsung Focus Flash, uh, which has a 3.7 inch display, um, but still it's... You know, lock these things up over time with it. Um, but yeah, you can see it really dwarfs it down in size. Now, again, that's not to say that it's a, a, it's a bad phone. It's just it's a little awkward at first. It might take a little bit of getting used to. I certainly can't say that it's a bad phone because of its size. Um, all I'm saying is it's something that you may want to actually hold in your hand and play with. Um, you know, give it some time and see what you think. Uh, it's definitely a device that you have to hold in person because um, you know when this goes in your pocket, if you have jeans, you may not have a problem. You might have a little bit of it hitting kind of in your hip when you kind of go to sit down or something. Um, but if you're a working kind of guy and you go out in business and you want this for a business use and you are khakis. Um, those khaki pockets are pretty sh pretty narrow and pretty short, um, so you may, depending on the size of your pants, may have this sticking out of the pocket, uh, with a little corner sticking out, and every now and then. So definitely pick it up at a store, check it out, see what you think, read our review, read other reviews, watch videos, and see what you guys think. It's an awesome phone. That's my bottom line. It's an awesome phone. Um, for me, it's a little too big, but for others out there, I can see this being a, a great device. Um, to me, I think the, the sweet spot's between 4 and 4.3, and um, but it's a blast to watch movies on. Um, it's definitely fun to play with. Um, but So overall, like I said, I can't say I don't recommend it. I give it an 8.5 out of 10 on a written review. Um, there's more details there if you guys want them. This is more of a hands-on, let you guys see what we think and kind of give you guys a quick demo uh, review. So... This is Mike from TechHog.com, and we hope to see you guys again checking out our videos. Head over to TechHog.com and check out our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash TechHog, and follow us on Twitter at TechHog. Again, I'm Mike, and hope you guys come back. Thanks so much.